hope you don't get to the top of Incompetent Mountain without a little help from your friends. And while Brady, Belichick, and company have ascended to the top mostly via the Machiavellian route, deflating balls, employing murderers, invading privacy, signing rapists, patroning sex dungeons, etc., you don't dominate your division like the Pats have without capitalizing on the utter ineptitude of your neighbors. Today we're discussing cakewalks, the AFC East in particular, and how its lack of competition has played a major role in the Patriot success in the 21st century, and why they should be the ones to shoulder the blame for the misery that NFL fans have suffered for the last 20 years. And that's coming up right after this. Do quick, be sure to check out my boy RBT who actually did a simulation of the entire AFC East versus the Patriots and the results are shocking. The New England Patriots have won the AFC East every season since 2009. Before that, they won their division six times between 2001 and 2007. All in all, the Pats have claimed the number one spot in the AFC East every season that Tom Brady has started except for one year. The Patriots have reigned atop the NFL for the last two decades, but it wouldn't be possible if not for their unrivaled dominance over the AFC East at the same time. But it wasn't always like this. There was a time when the Pats were subjects to their lords of the division, the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins. Starting in 1980, the Dolphins and Bills won the AFC East a combined 15 times in the next 20 seasons, thanks to the abilities of Dan Marino and Jim Kelly. Even the year that New England made their first Super Bowl in 1985, they did it as wild cards. Just at the tail end of the 90s, the Patriots had amassed some significant talent and started to turn the corner, capturing back-to-back -back division titles in 1996 and 1997 behind leaders like Drew Bledsoe, Willie McGinnis, and Ty Law that would usher them into their new era of Eastern assertion. But most importantly, at the start of the new millennium, the Patriots added the two pieces that have been the common thread between New England's six rings, while the rest of the division started putting their heads in their asses. Enter Bill Bell Belichick, who fortuitously left the Jets at the altar a la Josh McDaniels and his sixth round pick, golden boy Tom Brady. Together they've posted a 77 and 21 record against the AFC East. Obviously Brady has played every game with Belichick as his coach, but without Brady, Belichick's record versus his own division is seven and 10, mostly hampered by a poor campaign in 2000. Let's answer a big question. Is that a product of the Patriots' brilliance or the ineptitude of the Bills, Dolphins, and Jets? First, let's go back to 2002, the year of realignment that gave us eight modern divisions. When the AFC realigned, the Patriots got a major break. Their most worthy opponent, the Indianapolis Colts led by Peyton Manning, were moved to the AFC South. No, not the Dolphins, the southernmost team, the Colts, who would go on to win 10 games or more for the next nine seasons. Instead, the Patriots were treated to the post-Kelly Bills, the post-Marino Dolphins, and the post-anyone Jets. The first year of the new division, the Jets actually took the title despite a three-way tie between them, the Dolphins, and the Bills. From 2002 to present, the Bills, Jets, and Dolphins have combined for just eight playoff appearances and only two division titles, including the brady -less 2008 season. That year, Matt Castle led the Pats to an 11-5 record, but lost the division to Chad Pennington's Dolphins, who also went 11-5. The Patriots couldn't even get a wildcard spot with 11 wins, a rare stroke of bad luck for New England. So why has the rest of the division been so bad? Let's go team by team and figure it out, starting with the Miami Dolphins. Since 2002, the Dolphins have posted a record of 11-23 against the Patriots. In that time, their longest tenured coach has been Tony Sperano who lasted just three and a half seasons with the team before getting whacked. Their longest tenured quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, who started exactly zero playoff games and had a winning percentage of 477. The Dolphins have consistently made bad coaching decisions from trying to make a pro coach out of Nick Saban to replacing him with Cam Cameron, who went one in 15, to trotting out the lifeless corpse of Joe Philbin for three seasons. No continuity and no results, and this year is off to a great start, eh? Maybe the Jets have been a little better. Yeah, no. This is the team that began this unholy curse by knocking Drew Bledsoe out of a week two game in 2001 and ushering the era of plastic surgery and deflated balls. Their complete ineptitude hit peak levels in 2012 with the infamous butt fumble, of course against the Pats, but their futility has gone further than that. 
The Jets are 8-27 against New England since 2002. They've hit double-digit wins just four times in those 17 seasons, and it's no secret why. Just look at their quarterbacks. The last sustained winner they got was Chad Pennington, who capped out on arm strength at about 20 yards. Not much different than Brady, honestly. They got one mediocre year from Brett Favre, four Sanchez seasons, two more from Geno Smith, and then they got their greatest quarterback since Joe Namath. 2015, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who set the Jets record for touchdown passes in a season with 31 and the second most yards with 3,900. All that, and they missed the playoffs and then gave Fitz a lot of money. Of course, they do claim the greatest win by an AFC East team in the 21st century, a shocking 28-21 Jets victory in Foxborough in the divisional round. A forgotten light in the darkness that has been the new millennium of AFC East football. Now let's see how the third team has fared. Can't wait. The Buffalo Bills, more than the Jets, more than the Dolphins, have been impossibly bad against the Patriots. Awful. Abysmal. They've taken it lying down like Robert Kraft at a day spa. Since 2002, the Bills have posted a 4-30 record against New England. Yep, and two of those wins came against a Patriots backup quarterback. And speaking of Patriots backup quarterbacks, that's who the Bills signed in 2002, Drew Bledsoe, to hopefully catapult themselves back into the playoffs. It didn't work. The Bills missed the playoffs every season from 2000 to 2016, just twice scraping together a 9-7 record. Seven different head coaches, nine different quarterbacks. But to demonstrate their complete submission to the Patriots like Tom Brady after his son gets home from school, the Bills have had several long losing streaks against the Evil Empire. One 15-game losing streak that lasted from 2003 to 2011. And a five-game losing streak that the Bills are currently mired in. Three teams, six games a year, and a cakewalk to a first round bye every season since 2010. Just take this year for example. They get two games against a team that's actively trying to lose games. Maybe the most blatant example of tanking the NFL has ever seen. And of course, they're an inhabitant of the AFC East. Will it ever end? Will any of these three teams be man enough to wrestle the crown away from Tom Brady's hair plugs? There may be hope yet. The Jets have a promising future with the pairing of Sam Darnold and Adam Gase. The Bills have a legitimate identity as a defensive juggernaut, and the Dolphins, well, it might take a while for the Dolphins. But if the Houston Astros and Philadelphia 76ers have taught us anything, it's that tanking can pay dividends if done properly. Even then, it may take until Brady and Belichick hang them up or someone drives a wooden stake through their hearts. Give the Pats credit, but give the Bills, Jets, and Dolphins some credit too for sucking. One last point, before someone comments trying to debunk that the rest of the AFC East hasn't sucked, all of that rhetoric has been posted by Patriots fans and the Boston Globe. It's pretty bad when salty supporters of the team have to come to the aid of the other teams they beat up in order to justify their dominance. That in and of itself tells you how shit the AFC East has been. Remember, at some point, all three AFC East teams have started Ryan Fitzpatrick. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to check out my bookie and use my code POINTS100 to get up to a $1,000 cash bonus on your first deposit. And don't forget to check out RBT's video on the AFC East versus the Patriots. I'm Five Points Bids, and you made it to my next video.